itong mata din niya. Okay, so, um, wow, it's been a very, very satisfying Miss Universe season. And I think that um, pag, for today, ang gagawin natin is pag-uusapan natin yung mga um, things that happened, things that were very much worthy of discussion. Things that are, you know, kung ano yung mga nangyari dito sa um, recently held na Miss Universe pageant kung saan I think everyone is in agreement that Harnaz uh, Kaur Sandhu of um, India is uh, the most, you know, um, kumbaga, siya yung, isa sa, uh, siya yung pinaka-deserving na, na nanalo based on her overall performance from start to finish. So, um, ano lang, no? Let's, uh, before, you know, we, we, we continue with the, uh, with the actual na review, um, I just wanted to say muna uh, some points for, uh, for today's live. Um, una, ang gagawin natin is that we're going to discuss several points on the, um, uh, well, uh, uh, several points on the top 16, and then we're gonna talk about the production, the judges, the uh, performances, and uh, the um, eventual top 10, top 5, and top 3. So, medyo marami tayong pag-uusapan today. And um, hello din sa mga bagong, ano, bagong uh, tuned in sa ating live. Um, hello, Nimrod. Hello, uh, uh, Star Mom and uh, Sherry Ann. Uh, sa mga, mga uh, nag-join sa atin today no, for, the, for, for this live. Um, so, um, if you have any questions, just uh, feel free to you know, pop out uh, on the comment section para basahin natin and then we're going to answer those uh, a little bit later on. So, for this, you know, um, for this competition, for this Miss Universe na, na competition, super ganda na nangyari with what happened with the, um, with the production because ang linis, um, this is the kind of Miss Universe na namiss natin lahat. This is the kind of Miss Universe pageant na very high yung glamour factor ng, um, ng production. And also, I think that this year, super gaan ng movement ng camera. Hindi siya, hindi siya yung biglang, um, yung panning niya medyo off, yung ganun, uh, which I think nang, nangyari nung, uh, nangyari nung, uh, no 2020 na edition medyo hindi hindi ganun kapulido yung camera work for 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 me i think there is you know something to be desired pa doon sa 2020th na edition and i am glad that na address nila yun ngayon in this year's um in this year's pageant ang ganda nung kinalabasan nung stage i just hope na sana they utilized more of the stairs sa gilid um kasi ang ganda sana nung Kung during the swimsuit competition, you know, um, nagamit yun doon sa camera panning para it, the, the stage was utilized more. If you haven't noticed, doon sa swimsuit competition, medyo, ano, medyo, may konting, uh, may konting issue ako doon sa length of um, exposure ng mga girls na tipong wala pa sa gitna yung mga girls biglang pan na doon sa susunod na girls sa likod. I think that could have addressed, no? Um... Uh, okay, Star Mom said, ang saya ko kasi nakapasok uh, ang besties na ni Bea na SG and Beth na Vietnam. We're gonna talk about that later um, when we're discussing the top 16 kasi ang daming, ang daming shocked doon sa mga nakapasok simply because they were expecting a lot of front runners to really make it into the semis. And um, isa yun sa mga pag-uusapan natin later on no kayong magandala. Um, um, now, going back to... Um, to uh, the swimsuit competition na no, yung camera panning um, I hope na sana natuto yung mga girls um, okay Mike, Mike Joseph Bongot was uh, is saying na camera angles need a lot of work I agree kasi ang ganda nung stage um, I don't think na na-utilize properly yung stage in terms of the angles in terms of the choreography but what I can say is yung Sana yung mga girls because they know that they are given a block time for their presentation uh, in whether it's in swimsuit or whether it's in the evening gown. Sana they utilize the, that time na pag-aralan kung ano yung camera na naka-on, ano yung naka-live, naka um, naka-live feed para they made use of that time to really give their performance a boost. 
You know, um, I agree, eh, Nimrod. It's better than the 20, 2020th edition. Yes, exactly. Um, in terms naman of the you know, of the performances, um, I love the fact that very energetic umpisa pa lang yung, um, yung, yung, yung opening. It was so lively na um, ramdam mo na kahit na canned yung applause for the, ano, for the, for the, uh, for the, um, for, for the entire segment, eh, okay lang. Kasi ang importante naman, mamadala ka ng energy nung, nung, nung song, madala ka ng upbeat na energy and feel nung, um, what do you call this, nung, uh, nung, nung, oh, nung performance. And I think that's um, one of the things that I like with, um, with the opening performance ni Noah Carell. Um, I particularly love among the performances is the um, the final look when three singers um, I'm not sure who they are hindi naman kasi na publicize kung sino yung mga nagperform na mga artists I hope that um, later on mabigyan din sila ng shout out sa Miss Universe na, na na page simply because I love the way that they did the song Hallelujah which is a very intimate song. Um, if you if you watch, you know, um, American Idol, uh, past season of American Idol, um, that song is a very, you know, it's a make or break song. If you, you if you're not able to, you know, if you're not able to internalize the meaning of the song, then you're not gonna you're not gonna get you know a good performance out of it. And I think the 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 song when it was. Sung in Hebrew, in Arabic, in English was a very great, um, a very great. How to say this? Uh, it's a very great move, simply because of what's happening now with um, with the controversy of the pageant being held in Israel. So that's a, that's one thing of the, one of those things that I think um, the pageant uh, did well. Um, as for Jojo, um, I love the fact that she sang a medley of her old and her new songs and i actually am in love yung um uh yung yung, yung latest uh, song niya. i think may worst uh in the title i'm not sure yung yung exact um exact title but the song talks about um anxiety talks about um mental health issues and um things that she had to go through i believe and uh napaka gan napaka app nung nung um, nung message nung song I believe doon sa doon sa pinagdaanan niya personally I do not however agree that the song choice was a great choice for the evening gown competition because med medyo personal at medyo mabigat yung um, yung 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 kanta niya na yun. now um, Mary Jane is asking about bakit hindi ka pasok sa PR sa top 5 we'll get into that a little bit later kapag pinag-uusapan pag-uusapan na natin yung top 5 and top 10 later on okay um, what I don't like though is yung uh, if you notice uh, majority of the performance performers sorry um, is all female performers so I'm not fan of uh, it's not that it's bad but it's not good as well in the sense that if you have a all female judges judging panel um, which we will talk about later on okay and then you have a, 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 a panel of performers or, or a group of performers the majority female then but you're, you're you're kind of alienating yung, yung, yung male audience mo. and looking at um, I'm talking about you know my, my, my own experience no? uh, when you're talking about the following the following of um, of the pageant in terms of yung male versus female audience in my experience, um, whether it's Facebook or, um, or or Instagram, majority of those people who follow me are males. And um, siguro sa, I think it's only in YouTube na medyo nag-50-50 nag yung, uh, yung split ng, ng, ng followers ko. But majority of my followers in Facebook is ma the male audience. The same thing with um, with Instagram, although mas diket yung following sa Instagram because I believe currently my numbers uh, tend to be like around 64, um, around 60, 60% 60 male and around 40% female. 
So yun yung um, medyo hindi ako hindi ko nagustuhan because I hope na sana the pageant would also not alienate the male viewership because that's your core audience. Um, now, let's now talk about the panel of judges. Um, for the panel of judges, I think that um, the all-female judging panel was a bit too overdrawn na. Parang we've done that. It's time to move on. Um, I know that the pageant would want to have a um, a more tawag nito? more uh, politically correct stance or rather maybe they want to be more to, to be seen that the pageant is by the by you know for women by women and uh, judged by women i mean I'm, I'm okay with that but i just hope that they also understand that when you are talking of a miss universe winner her audience is not only the female audience um, the audience niya is more likely a multitude of uh, people, not only you know kids, not only adults, but also you know people of different genders. And when I talk about you know um, it's uh, the Miss Universe audience, kinakailangan sana maintindihan din naman ng Miss Universe na kinakailangan may per may may konting male perspective in the way that the uh, the Miss Universe is selected. Um, kahit man lang sana isa o dalawang judge it could not have you know a you know a, a, a big impact on the on the um, on the eventual na, na na results because um, I think that this year very deserving yung mga nakapasok ng top three um, very deserving yung mga nakatap nakatap five in the competition so um, I think that um, uh, yung ano yung 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 um yung yung need siguro to have a male perspective in a way so that um all you know everybody is represented in the judging table para mas um mas holistic yung yung uh yung pagpili um that way you don't alienate a huge chunk of your market because uh, i mean in naman natin um males and specifically gay males are the majority of the um, yeah or rather gay males um, play a huge uh, part in the terms in terms of you know how big the audience is for the Miss Universe na 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 na, na beauty pageant okay um, another thing that uh, I've noticed with the judging panel is that there is a common thread or a commonality um, in the in the type of people who were selected as uh, selection committee and lahat sila halos may kinalaman sa entertainment industry so which means that uh, these people are likely going to look for someone who is not just you know um, authentic real um, a good speaker and whatnot but someone who can be more of a spokesperson and a brand ambassador um, for the uh, for the organization. So, ibig sabihin, kinakailangan may commercial um, may commercial uh, viability yung hahanapin nila na, uh, na, na, na winner. And I, I think um, one of the things that the judges um, had the opportunity is that they judged the girls from start to finish, meaning from the interview preliminaries to the uh, swimsuit and the evening gown preliminaries. So um, that way, na, kumbaga, they are able to form their opinions from the preliminary competition pa lang. Doon pa lang sa closed door interview, they were already able to pick who they are eyeing for, for the Miss Universe title, which means that, sorry about that, which means that um, you need, if you're a candidate, you need to make good of an impression prelims pa lang. Kasi kung sa prelims pa lang, eh, hindi ka na nagpakita ng gilas, then they might not consider you later down the line as a possible Miss Universe. And I think that is one of the, um, one of the, 
uh, what do you call this? One of the disadvantages of having a selection committee from the prelims to the finals. And this is something also that is, you know, we've done this uh, type of um, um, same judges from prelims to finals back in the 80s, back into the 90s. And doon sa mga panahong yun, um, you've, you can see that a lot of the girls who are actually um, winners uh, come finals night, medyo may ilan doon na mapapakamot ko, ulo ka. Um, and that is why I think um, this, you know, um, yung, yung importance ng prelims cannot be discounted because if, for example, if let's say... Um, uh, Miss Brazil did not make an impression at the closed door interview. It doesn't matter if she makes a good impression on the finals because by then they already had someone else in mind because of what they've seen at the preliminaries. So that's you know that's something that we all need to process. Um, another thing that um, I've you know I I I've, uh, I've I've noted here is that it feels like Nadia Ferreira of Paraguay is their favorite. Uh, and I will be discussing that a little bit later on um, when we're discussing the top three and the top five uh, Q&A. Um, but I felt that um, she was a favorite alongside India. And um, speaking of India, if you haven't had this theory that um, a lot of the Miss India, uh, rather a lot of the Miss Universe winners they are usually positioned in the middle of every competition. So they are called either number um, number four, uh, four, five, six in the top 10, or number uh, number eight in the top 16, or number three in the top five, or number two in a top three. And I think that's one of the reasons why I thought to myself that, okay, India is going to be the most possible winner, more most likely to win this year's Miss Universe because she is always positioned at the middle. Granted that at the top ten she was called later at the at the um at the end of the competition. I think she was called um no India was called uh let me see. India was called around uh, number 10 in the top 16, which is a little bit in the middle. Um, in the top 10, she was called number 4, which is again in the middle. In the top 5, she was called first. In the top 3, she was called second, which is always, you know, um, she's always positioned in the middle. That means that um, for old pageant connoisseurs for, like us, na in the 90s, we've noticed that in the 90s, anyone who is positioned in the middle, that's most likely the org's favorite. So we've seen, we've seen that in India this uh, this year and I was like, okay, um, if ne India nails the top five, top three question, then the crown is hers. Um, and that's why uh, I've always kept in the back of my head that right now, most probably, the girl who is going to be more um, charismatic in the Q&A later, that's the one who's going to... Uh, to win, and if they if they are if India is not um, is not uh, not um, if India is is it you know is it on her toes you know um, she might lose the crown. Thankfully, that did not happen, and um, I thought that during the last three, you know, um, I was really uh, I was really eyeing for girls to really speak out to be really very communicative because that is something that they need to do at the prelims and nail it in the finals. Now, why is that? That's because the interview preliminaries is a make or break deal. Even if you do well in swimsuit or in the evening gown, if you break it in the uh, preliminary uh, interview round, then you're not going to make top. 16. You're not gonna make top 15 on, in this year's competition because um, if you remember back in 2017, January 2017, where the uh, where the Miss Universe um, uh, 2016 was held, um, it was mentioned by one of the judges that 60% of the scores of the girls will be taken from the closer interview. That means that you really need to wow the judges at the closer interview. 
you need to you know show personality you need to show your um, your achievements um, tell them why you should be Miss Universe um, what are your plans to be Miss Universe uh, to do um, uh, in, in the Miss Universe uh, competition and um, what are your plans if you should win and I think that is one of the things that needs to be you know needs to be stressed on because if you make good impressions in the preliminary interview it doesn't matter if you make a small you know stumble at the uh, at the finals your you know you you you, you didn't you didn't overperform in the finals because people um, the judges would be you know would already have taken note that oh we can you know we can slide that small tumble in the in the turns or in the uh, in the swimsuit competition or the evening gown competition simply because they already knew the lady who is competing by that point okay um, now let's talk about the girls who did not make it into the semis um, there's a lot of you you know mentioning about Thailand about Brazil um, about um, what's her name uh, about Kirest uh, of, of, of Belgium I think that a lot of the uh, reasons why they didn't make you know uh, they didn't make semis is that they have a lot of tough competitions from the um, from the from the get-go during the preliminaries they didn't really shine they didn't really um, they didn't really perform and we've seen that uh, we've seen that um, happen in the uh, preliminary uh, evening gown and swimsuit um, Brazil didn't really shine in the, in the evening gown competition um, although she had a very respectable and solid performance in the swimsuit so um, now if you factor in whether or not she is able to you know impress the judges with her resume or impress the judges with their um, with their uh, with their you know agenda uh, or with their interviews then that's another you know another spe speculation on probably why she didn't make it into the semis. Now, let's talk about Anjali Scott Kermis of um, Thailand. Um, she is a personal favorite. I'm not going to deny that. I've always uh, saw her as a possible Miss Universe winner. However, um, with all due respect to the other candidates who brought it not only in the interview uh, interview level, but also who also had uh, you know very strong bios, had a very strong performance in the preliminary and the uh, preliminary swimsuit and evening gown competition it's not enough to rely only on your ability to speak and you need to be able to nail um, all segments of the preliminary competition to make it to the top 16 and i think that um with the very you know uh, with a he heavy batch this year um, i think a lot of the girls are very competitive that we just didn't see them how much are are they you know competitive um, on stage and behind the scenes and I think um, that is what um, what factored in with uh, with Angelis chances of making semis um, I think that because there are other girls who outperformed her who probably you know did as well as her in the um, in the uh, interview department the only thing that probably separated them from Anjali is the performance aspect. So um, I am sad that um, Anjali did not make it into the semis, but I do understand why all the 16 girls who made it into the semis, you know, are deserving of their position. Um, now, um, in terms of how come, you know, Sara Loinas of um, Spain did not, you know, make it into the semis as well. That I have no definitive answer, except that maybe during the prelims, um, the evening gown uh, performance wasn't as strong, uh, or the 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 makeup was wrong, or or whatnot. We cannot really pinpoint what went wrong, because maybe the problem relied on the uh, on the indoor interviews if she's not she wasn't able to you know to uh, impress the judges or wasn't able to showcase more of her personality and who she she is um that might have you know that might have uh, affected her chances 
Um, I am very disappointed as well that Belgium did not make it into the semis because I really love, you know, um, Cadiz. Um, she's one of the more beautiful, uh, beautiful girls in the competition. She's one of the more um, interesting girls simply because of her uh, background, because of, you know, because of her, uh, for of, because of her being a woman of color. And I am glad that even if she didn't make it, at least Clemens Botino of um, of France was able to make it um, for you know to 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 um, how do you call this to to make up for uh, the non placement of Kedis because I I really thought that um, two of uh, two Afro Europe Europeans would really make it into the semis, um, but you know. This is COVID. This is a competition, and therefore, there will be people who will not make it into the semis because there's a lot of girls who are going to be really, very um, competitive. And with a uh, with this batch, a lot of them were silent killers. That we are not really shocked that the top sixteen comprised of women um, who are more accomplished now. Let's talk about the top 16. Um, I'm just going to run through uh, the top 16 um, according to you know, how they were called out. Um, we had France, we had Colombia, Singapore, Panama, and Puerto Rico. The first five girls are all women of color. And then we have um, uh, on the second batch, we have uh, the Bahamas, Japan, Great Britain, USA, and India. Again, majority of them are women of color. Um, and then um, at, the, at the last half, uh, oh, uh, last quart, uh, tri, tri group, trimester, uh, last, the last third of the semi-finalists, we have um, Vietnam, who I didn't hear, I didn't heard that she was the, um, the uh, fan vote winner. Um, my bad on that. Um, but I always thought that Vietnam is going to be the fan vote winner because if you, you haven't noticed, Vietnam are very strong when it comes to voting. Whether it's Miss Universe or Miss Grand International, they always make it in the voting rounds. And if you haven't noticed as well, Vietnam has you know um, has this thirst of making it to the semi uh, in the, uh, to make it in the semis. And it's not that you know it's not that because they're not you know they're not uh, they don't perform well. But if you look at the org, the org is willing to burn money on the voting just to make their, uh, make their girl make it into the semis. And I think if you have an organization that, that's like that, then you know, all you need to do is perform and perform well in the, uh, in the finals. And boy, my God, Vietnam showed personality in the... Uh, in the semis interview, I thought that she might even make it to the top 10. Um, but, you know, I have no qualms with the top 10 who made it there. Um, I think uh, the, uh, her performance in the top 16, um, Kim Duyen's uh, performance in the top 16, could, um, is worthy of a merit to make, uh, it's worthy of its own merit to make top 10. Okay? Um, now, um, the other girls who made it uh, uh, in the in the semis after uh, Vietnam were Aruba, um, Paraguay, Philippines, Venezuela, and South Africa, and I think that they made a great choice of putting the some of the best performance performers towards the lower end of the competition because uh, we all know that. Philippines, Paraguay, Venezuela, they are some of the best catwalk, um, uh, catwalkers in, uh, in the Miss Universe pageant this year. Um, I was very impressed with Aruba. Um, I was very, you know, um, I was very, you know, delighted with her reaction, uh, making it into the semis because, you know, that was genuine. That, that was her all the way. And, you know, that kind of, that kind of, uh, personality, you know, um, is so magnanimous, it's so luminous that you just can't help to think that this girl 
um, would be someone that I would like to be uh, friends with. Um, I want to know more about her. I want to know what uh, what she can offer for the title. And I think you know she did a great job in the in the competition, and her placement is very well guaranteed. Now, if you look at everyone in the competition, everyone who made top sixteen, you would notice that a lot of the girls who are in the top six uh, in the semifinals are girls who are achievers in their own right. Okay. Um, um, I'm not gonna talk about each of these girls achievements because you can see that in their um, in their um, profiles in their Miss Universe bios at the uh, Miss Universe website and it was very you know um, it was very delightful because um, for a pageant you know pageant analyst or connoisseur like I am I spent hours pouring over the you know the um, the candidate bios of uh, of the ladies in in this year's Miss Universe pageant, and I am glad that a lot of the girls who I mentioned in my list of um, crown contenders plus the list of uh, uh, best bios were ladies who made it into the you know into the semifinalists. And um, Bahamas is one of those girls that I am so glad really really glad to make it into the semi-finalist um, you have to understand that um, Bahamas is not your typical pageant girl who is you know uh, who is you know very uh, very uh, palatable to the to the Western world she represents a very you know very unique beauty um, beauty that would be very palatable to people of color and I think that her achievements outside of pageantry um, is something that we can all be impressed about. Um, she, at her very young age, is a um, certified youth leader by the uh, Bahamas government, or rather by the Bahamas Ministry of Youth. And that is something that you can brag about um, into the competition. Another girl who is, you know, very um, impressive in terms of her background is um, Brenda of Panama. Um, the mere fact that um, she mentioned during the interviews, uh, um, uh, preliminary, uh, sorry, in the in the uh, top sixteen interviews with Steve Harvey, that um, you, uh, it, I'm, I'm just paraphrasing at this point. No, um, she she mentioned that. It's better for people to, you know, uh, to take the opportunity that rather than to wait for an allocated seat on the table, you know, to build your own table or to be, build your own uh, seat rather than wait for it to, to be given to you. Um, that was very impressive. And then add to that yung pagiging um, United Nations fellow nga, you know that the, this girl has really made something out of herself and that is uh, one thing that she's bringing into the competition. Um, kumbaga, um, meron na siyang achievements. Dagdag na lang yung pagiging Miss Universe later on if she wins um, doon sa magiging list of accomplishments niya. And I think that is one of the things that, you know, really, really impressed us with um, with the uh, semifinalists this year. And then let's talk about Japan. Um, I'm 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 uh, I'm a little bit on the fence uh, with Japan um, during the preliminaries because I didn't like the very static face during the evening gown and the swimsuit competition. Na medyo masyadong seryoso tapos biglang naglighten up and then um, hindi mo alam kung hindi hindi it's her her technical skills on the facial transitions wasn't as uh, polished as I. I uh, as I would have wanted. However, in terms of communication skills, she is uh, uh, arguably one of the better communicators in her batch. Um, and in my list of the strongest Asians, um, I've included Japan as a possible, um, a possible, you know, one of the underrated uh, candidates, uh, Asian candidates this year. And she proved us, you know, um, that she's worthy of the semis with her wit with her character in the um in the in, in the pre in the uh, in the finals interview you know yung interview niya with uh, steve harvey and i also wanted to mention that she is taking an mba um 
and that's something that we all should you know should um, be very mindful about that okay this girl you know um, is very accomplished uh, on her own and then we have of course um, let's mention uh, 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 Michelle Marie Colon of uh, Puerto Rico who is also you know a girl na when it comes to her uh, resume when it comes to her pageant resume she has a double degree she is a double degree major taking up uh, pre-med and biology that means that this girl has you know at her young age at 22 or 21 years old has already done something it's already doing something that we all uh, are only dreaming at this point you know um, it speaks about um, her ambition it speaks about her you know um, about her uh, worthiness of um, having the title kasi hindi ka naman basta basta hindi, hindi mo naman basta basta pwedeng um, baliwalain yung ano yung um, yung academic achievement niya um, and, and in and also yung yung charity work niya which is the care empowerment program um, marami din uh, marami din siyang nagawa she has a lot of things that she was able to accomplish with uh, with uh, with her advocacy advocacy and charity work so in terms of what she has done for her community and for herself to improve herself um, it you can't really deny this lady and on top of that she also had a very impressive preliminary um, preliminary performances so you cannot really uh, you cannot really you know uh, um, ignore her in the competition now let's talk about the ladies who made top 10 um, at the top 10 we have uh, girls competing for the swim uh, for the evening gown competition okay, okay wait um, I forgot to mention something about the swing suits. No, I'm not a I'm not a very I'm not a fan of the um, cover ups. I thought that papalitan yung cover ups with a sarong. Um, I was expecting na palitan nila yung sar yung yung cover ups with the sarong because the leopard print was so off character for um, for the swing suit. I think that uh, styling wise, um, you the the the. Uh, the bathrobe uh, type of thingy that they were um, that they were sporting would only look good on white, on tan colored na swimwear, on black. Um, imagine it on the uh, burgundy swimwear. It kind of clashes. So I, um, I hope that they just you know um, they just uh, change that up. Maybe maybe a, a simpler you know, a simpler um, cover-up would have sufficed, okay? Now, the top 10, we have um, the first call in Paraguay, which is no surprise because she was really one of the girls that was very vivacious in the swimsuit competition. And then um, we have Puerto Rico, who I thought would make top 5, um, but we'll discuss that a little bit later on. And then we have USA, um, India, who... Uh, who I love the fact that she wore a different gown for uh, the 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 uh, swimsuit. I mean, a different gown for the finals. Sorry. Um, again, uh, yes, me Galieto. I agree with you with you hundred percent about the camera being too fast on the swimsuit segment that you couldn't even process the girls. But again, you have to understand everyone in the competition, everyone who made semis are given let's say 13 seconds each whether they nail their poses um, uh, from the get go or not uh, that's on them uh, the reason why some girls uh, were not given exposure at the end of the runway that's because they all already used up their time so the best thing that they could have done was to you know um, speed up their presentation a bit um, start walk, walking after they've already uh, after they already um, uh, uh, stepped down the stairs so that that, that way um, whatever poses or whatever um, whatever uh, what do you call this whatever um, transitions or, or, or strong registers that they want to do on camera they are able to do it within the allotted time that they were given to them okay um, yes, Nimrod, I agree. 
um, Puerto Rico was hurt by that uh, by that um, by that time frame by the very and uh, you know very um, small time frame to finish her entire presentation because I think that Puerto Rico had one of the more clean pasarelas and in uh, performances in the swimsuit at the prelims um, but nevertheless she made top you know top uh, top 10 and we're gonna talk about the gowns um, and, and and why I think she did not make top five okay um, I was as I was saying India love the fact that she changed her gown because this final gown was more um, how do you say this was more apt for her body um, it gave her more I don't know she looked taller she looked more um, in command in, uh, and more present in this um, in this uh, uh, in this um, in this gown okay um, then we have South Africa who although I preferred the white gown I think this gold and black gown was more strategic um, in the competition um, and then uh, the Bahamas was called uh, with a very white silver gown and Philippines um, who I believe had one of the best uh, evening gowns at that night was called in uh, called in seven um, and then uh, France who I thought her preliminary gown was much better than her finals gown and I think that one, that's the one thing that hurt her because the gold was so good on her as compared to her um, silver-ish uh, uh, gown that she sported here in the uh, in the finals I think that the gold really elevated her beauty um, the, 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 the silver gown didn't really give her a lot of you know glow as compared to the gold one and I think that um, that was you know that was really uh, a, a sad choice okay um, yes I agree uh, Nimrod Bea's gown was perfect for her okay um, now and now we have Colombia who sported her prelims gown I think that was the right choice um, because her that gown is is stunning you know um, that gown you can't go wrong uh, with that uh, with that uh, with, with that gown it's it's an it's a classic alfredo barraza it's it's something that uh, the silhouette it's something that we've already uh, seen before but again if it works why reinvent why reinvent the wheel you know um and then uh, last call was aruba which i think everyone was surprised everyone i believe was either rooting for let's say um venezuela or even um uh, uh, Vietnam to make uh, to make uh, to, to make the top 10 now here's the thing about Venezuela about uh, Louisa you know I think what hurt her chances of in making the top 10 was that she was very studied I think that's the right that's that's the only word that I can think of right now that 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 um, reflects her performance I think it was you know, it was too calculated, perhaps. Uh, perhaps that's the right uh, that's the right term. I think when you have you know when you have some someone who is as gorgeous as her, someone who is so technically proficient as her, the danger of uh, of that perfection is that you would look very robotic, or that you would look too trained. Or too calculated in your presentation um, yes uh, Ray Francis I agree typical Venezuela girl but the thing is everybody loves a Venezuelan girl and I love the fact that she brought her a game into the competition but um, I, I, I agree with what being said that it, the, the natural uh, natural sense is a, li a little bit lost and we hope that she would bring more of that um, I think that the best um, Venezuelan performance for me would still be Alicia Machado uh, during the 1996 Miss Universe pageant where she brought personality she was vivacious in every single round of the competition and you know that it that it was her um, I think 
again when you are too calculated you come off across as inauthentic and I and, and based on what Paula Sugart was saying um, to the judges during the uh, preliminary interview competition that what they're looking for is um, a real woman um, someone who's authentic um, someone you know uh, someone who can easily become the face of the brand and uh, I think that the learning lesson uh, you know the, the 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 lesson here not only for Venezuela but you know for every pageant uh, pageant pageant country out there is that it also doesn't look good that you are too calculated in your movements okay um, standouts on the evening gowns um, I would definitely give the best gown to Bea um, it was magnificent it was perfect for her um, I would say Puerto Rico I love her gown USA uh, for me had one of the most stunning gown um, it was a Michael Cinco if I'm not mistaken um, it really brought out you know if if you look at everyone in the competition, the first girl that I, my eyes would actually go to is um, El Smith in her, you know, Aquamarine Turquoise um, silver gown, simply because everyone else was sporting silver, nude, or gold at that night. Um, another girl that um, really stood out for me uh, in the uh, evening gown competition is, of course, Nadia Ferreira of Paraguay. Her twirl with using you know using the movement of the fabric in her presentation that was so marvelous it was calculated the way that she moved but it worked well because it went so fluidly that it looked natural in 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 terms of uh, presentation wise okay um, of course Colombia is uh, again on the list simply because this is a very you know very run-of-the-mill Miss Colombia gown um, run-of-the-mill um, uh, Alfredo Barraza gown that is so good when it comes to competition uh, for pageants. Okay, um, now um, one of the heartbreaks for me is actually Puerto Rico, who I thought would make top five easily, and I think what hurt her chances in the uh, in the competition was that she followed a very technically perfect presentation from Paraguay. And when you are following a um, a you know a, a choreography from uh, from someone who is so technically prof uh, proficient, someone who is you know uh, uh, who is uh, really good at her presentation, and you are at the upper upper uh, upper half of the uh, top ten, that is a very um, difficult place to be in um, to be called second or second to the last is a very dangerous position simply because one if the girl who uh, came out before you or after you is uh, um, uh, much more technically proficient uh, or more uh, has more pasabog uh, I would say then you you need to match that level, and I think that that's something that um, hurt you know Michelle's chances. Um, I also think that being one of the first girls to be called out um, hurt her chances because um, here's a theory. You know, um, a lot of the girls when they are being scored, some of the judges would actually hold off high uh, giving high scores. At the beginning of the competition, because they're reserving their, you know, um, they're reserving their high scores towards the middle or towards the end of the competition, and that's why if you are going to be called, you know, in the semi-final list, the most strategic point is for you to be placed in the middle, which Harnas was uh, throughout the competition, because that is where they would start giving out really high scores for the judges. Um, the judges very rarely that they would score the first girl um, very very high in the competition uh, especially on swimsuit or the evening gowns uh, gown segments and I think that was the reason why Michelle got cut from the top five I think that had Michelle been positioned either fifth sixth or um, or even seventh um, she might have a bigger 
fighting chance to make it to the top five. Okay, now to the girls who made the top five. Um, you have first was called was India, South Africa, and then Paraguay, Colombia, and the Philippines. Um, these girls were no surprise. Uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, um, if you look back at the uh, pre um, post preliminary live that I, I did with Mark Sobrahani, um, we mentioned um, some of these girls in the uh, in our s a small game about the shoulda coulda woulda uh, 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 part of the of the of the what do you call this of the uh, of the live uh, video um, and that you know coupled with you know with our choices we mentioned. I mentioned Philippines as a possible winner. Um, uh, Philippines, India, Puerto Rico, um, uh, South Africa, Paraguay. Those are a lot. Those are some of the names that we've thrown out as possible winners, and all of them made it into our top five. And also, when I published, um, I think earlier, earlier this week. Or was it Saturday? Uh, Saturday, Saturday morning here in the Philippines. The um, uh, my list of the crown contenders: India, South Africa, Paraguay, Colombia, the Philippines were all in that list. So um, I'm not very um, what do you call this? I'm not very uh, very shocked that they made it into the top five. Um, in fact, I think uh, I even placed. Um, Bea as a possible crown spoiler in the in the uh, in the list and um, Valeria Ayos, uh, Luis Seth, and um, if I'm not mistaken, Nadia and Harnas were also in that list. Um, uh, I, for sure, Lalela and uh, um, Lalela and El Smith were were uh, were in that list uh, of my uh, possible crown contenders and. I am glad that all of them made it in the sem in the in the top in the top ten. And for the top five, I am very very much pleased that India was uh, first to be called because um, for sure, if you put someone who is not very um, who's not a very you know smooth talker at the beginning of the competition, it kind of brings down the energy for the rest of the uh, of of. Uh, of the uh, of the top five uh, Q and A, um, so she she uh, she she put the um, uh, she basically dictated the energy uh, for the top five, which she re sorry, <clears throat> which she really you know uh, she really delivered with a very strong answer, um, and you know we've already always said that you know um, uh, Harnas was probably the strongest girl from Asia and uh, she she is one of the more possible winners um, coming from uh, Asia um, and then we had South Africa in the uh, in the mix who is another girl with a strong background strong communication skills and what came into play in in the uh, in the top five question is that she really you really see, you know, the lawyer training in the in the in the way that she answered. You know, uh, my only uh, my only my only comment here with uh, with uh, with Lalela was that she had a very strong beginning until the midpoint, but really, but kind of lost energy or rather lost um, lost confidence towards the end of her uh, of her uh, top five Q and A. The, the fact that she mentioned about you know about cancel culture but at the same time there is uh, she, that she believes about um, redemption personal redemption um, of um, improving oneself uh, oneself to you know to make up for past mistakes I think that was a very very good point um, it was not delivered strongly as I as I hope because I I've seen her compete in Miss South Africa and she was really the bet the better or the best um, overall performer um, in the top three in South Africa and I was hoping for that same energy I am glad though that she still made top three um, despite a you know um, unsure ending towards her top five uh, and uh, Q&A then we had Paraguay 
Paraguay, I would say, is the favorite, personal favorite of the um, of the judges because despite you know skirting the uh, the que the top five question and answer, um, she still made top three, and I think that what happened was for um, for uh, Nadia is that she impressed the judges so much at the um, at the preliminary interviews that anything that she did she does at the um, at the finals would not necessarily you know um, affect her chances of winning that much I think um, at the preliminaries um, she already laid the foundation for her for um, for for her to be a favorite um, a favorite of the judges okay um, Paraguay I again performance wise did really well when it come when it came to the top you know top uh, top uh, five Q and A I thought because you know she skirted the answer okay she sounded right when uh, she sounded she, <laughs> sorry she sounded right in the way that she delivered her 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 answer um, but if you look at the content she kind of skirted away or rather she, she rather um, uh, went around about uh, regarding the question um, and I thought at that moment that oh my god if after India and after um, um, South Africa's uh, impressive Q&A I thought that they're already shoe-ins for the top you know for the top uh, the, the, for the top three and the last possible spot might be you know uh, might be a make or break between the three remaining ladies and whoever fumbles to the Q&A um, they're automatically out and I thought Nadia would be out of the competition by then um, because when um, Valeria spoke she was very calm she was very you know composed in the way he did she delivered her answer and I think that what that kind of composure is something that I thought the judges will become uh, would be uh, would be impressed with um, there was a little bit of shakiness in the way that Valeria uh, answered her question I don't know it what if it was the nerves or it was you know um, it was the the, the, the way she spoke but I was expecting a very animated Miss Colombia uh, I was expecting a the same energy when she did her Q&A um, in Miss Universe Colombia where there was charisma there was personality there was passion and fire in the way that she uh, she answered her question and when I looked at her um, top five uh, Q&A versus her her uh, uh, Miss Universe Colombia um, answer, she sounded more, um, more confident in uh, Miss Universe Colombia. Now, I have a theory why it happened that um, she spoke English, why she spoke in, in English, and the same thing that why Paraguay spoke English uh, as well. Because um, if you know, if you haven't, if, if you're gonna rewind and you haven't noticed the translator, um, when Nadia was uh, was being asked the question, the translator kind of gave a vibes that he was struggling with the way he translated the question to Nadia, and I think Nadia and Valeria picked up on that. I think that they thought that if they're gonna speak in English, there is a bigger chance that they're. Um, answer would be delivered the way that they wanted it to be instead of having spoken in Spanish and then have the translation you know bungled or you know uh, mistranslated by the interpreter and that was a good thing that at that moment they were able to pivot they were able to tweak what they need to do so that um, they're able to how do you call this um, to re-strategize their, uh, their 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 game plan and that's a very smart and a very you know um, very well thought out way to do um, in a competition where you're not really uh, sure that the interpreter would do a good job okay 
Um, I think that's one of the things that uh, uh, that contributed, you know, to her not being able to confidently, you know, uh, confidently deliver her answer. Okay, um, just a quick pause here. Um, someone is asking about uh, the link for the live stream. Unfortunately, the Miss Universe um, YouTube uh, live stream link that uh, um, that was sent via the uh, Miss Universe app, it's not working here in the Philippines. Thank God for Lazada for that. So, um, abangan yun na lang siguro sa Lazada yung kung may uh, replay man sila because at the, the, the YouTube link that um, is, you know, that is posted um, on the Miss Universe app for those who have Miss Universe app, I tried the link and it says um, video not found. And when you have a video that says not found, it means that either the settings of the live has it was uh, blocked on certain countries because maybe there is a um, what do you call this? There's an arrangement between um, the Miss Universe organization and the sponsor Lazada that they're the ones who are going to be um, live streaming the event. Um, in uh, the same way that you know um, that ABS-CBN A to Z um, has the rights of um, telecasting the, uh, the 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 pageant finals. Okay, so um, I'm sorry if I cannot help you out on a live stream link. Okay, uh, now let's go now to Miss Philippines. Uh, she was facile. <laughs> <laughs> basically um, I see the parallels between um, Pawin Suda and uh, and and and, uh, and Bea um, they were given really tough questions and I think Bea fumbled the question um, I thought that had it been that you know Bea or um, Valeria delivered a strong answer, um, delivered confidently, with content, with con con uh, with uh, conviction, with passion, with you know, with fire in their words. They would have made top three. Um, they would have taken the spot of Paraguay. That is why uh, during the um, interview trainings of uh, Boy Abunda, she, he always mentioned, uh, you have to sound right. And that is what, you know, separated um, Nadia Ferreira over Valeria and Bea. Because Nadia, even if the content did not really hit the question bull's eye, she was able to sound right in her delivery of the answer. And that is what made her into the top three. Um, Bea had a, you know, had a, um, a, a tricky question because her question would mean, you know, um, choosing between uh, being safe, uh, be, uh, having the community safe versus having the, uh, versus, you know, be, versus your right um, to your own body and I think that is you know uh, that is something that was playing in her head um, choosing between one of the others it's either safety of others of everyone in the community or my own personal freedoms and I think that was a very tricky question that she was not able to manage well in her answer her answer did not really hit the, the, the nail hard or did not really answer in such a way that there is a conflict resolution in that um, in that you know uh, in that question unlike La Lela who also had a very tricky question and um, you have to understand her question is very uh, very very sensitive because you cannot um, because you cannot you know you cannot choose one over the other and you need to be very neutral in your delivery of the answer um, and what Lelela did was that yes she acknowledges you know um, 
that past mis that, that mistakes needs to be punished or needs to be um, uh, corrected or needs to be you know uh, there needs to be a consequence to um, to bad behavior but at the same time she countered it with a more humane um, response that everyone should be afforded a second chance should be afforded a chance to redeem themselves and I think that is what separated you know um, La Leila and India in the entire competition in the in the in the entire top five. That's why I was not very surprised that the first two girls to be called were South Africa and India. And then when they called the last girl, I was hoping that it might still go towards either uh, either of the three Paraguay, Colombia, and the Philippines in terms of um, in terms of uh, uh, the last placement <coughs> excuse me <coughs> there um, but now reviewing the way that um, Nadia answered her uh, her question her, her uh, top five question I understood why she made the top three now let's now talk about the top three because I think this was the most exciting top three that I have ever seen since um, Katriona, Tamrin, and Stephanie in 2018. Um, I would love to be a fly on the wall to have covered that uh, because all three girls were on my list of the possible crown contenders. They are all girls that I see the possibility of winning. Um, now let's talk first about um, South Africa. Um, the moment she mentioned, you know, courage over comfort over the final question, um, that for me was like a winning answer, and I was hoping that um, that India could top that uh, answer herself for India to win. And uh, because at this point in time, I'm not playing favorites but I'm I'm thinking that they put India strategically at the middle of the of the uh, of the two girls so which which means that they're probably you know uh, she's probably the favorite uh, of the organization to win and then when India came out um, when India came out as uh, for her Q&A and she mentioned about believing her uh, in yourself and then she personalized her answer then that was the the aha moment for me that she's already going to win the crown i think that at that point when you answer the question and then relate your personal experience like india like harnas did with the question that was that is the winning formula in answering any question you go to the area that you know most um, and that is um, giving you know uh, throwing it back to your experiences and um, giving you know uh, giving uh, putting yourself into the equation okay um, because that's that's really the point that India separated from the two runners up now let's talk about para paraguay what she did well in the question and answer was that she started off with her personal experience and if you notice throughout the entire competition um it was explained in clips that uh, that she experienced you know um uh, the i don't i forgot the medical term that she experienced um surgery at a very young age at eight months and then somewhere you know uh, before she turned you know in her teens um she had uh she had a year or two where she was uh partially blind um could not move and i think that was something that you know um that was very very you know uh indicative of um of who she is as a person um, it, it showed, you know, uh, it showed something very humane about her because what people do when you have a very, um, 
have you have a very commercial you have a very strong gorgeous face is that they tend to think that because if because you're beautiful then it means that you didn't have um, pub, you probably didn't have struggles in life or that you're just a pretty face and you're not very um, intellectually gifted or that you're just a pretty face and then that's the box that they are you know they've um, big box the, uh, that they've boxed you in and I think that um, Paraguay you know explaining you know um, her uh, her past experiences in the top three was a correct move um, because there is a human interaction in that answer and I think that is also the reason why you know um, despite having a weaker content as compared to Lalela um, she ended up uh, higher rank than uh, than Lalela in the top three um, upon reviewing all the things that I've seen in the uh, finals um, the advantage why Paraguay placed over La Lela was that Paraguay was consistent, uh, consistently good from prelims to finals in the swimsuit and evening gown comp uh, competition. And the, the, the way that uh, things work in the Miss Universe uh, judge, judging is that they're uh, um, in the final look, you know, um, the way how it, it is judged is that the judges are now going to take everything into perspective meaning your preliminary performance your finals per performance your um, your uh, Q&A and then they're gonna you know they're gonna decide on whether or not they deem you as the next Miss Universe and that is why I think Nadia placed uh, higher as compared to La Leila. Um, at this, at the, at the top three Q and A, you know, I already knew that India Harnas is going to be the win, the winner. Um, I think she's, you know, she did everything well from, con from, um, from the preliminaries until the finals. She was consistent all throughout. She, she did very, very, very well, exceptionally well in the pasarela. In the transitions of her face in the way that she moved on stage in the way that she answered her questions in the way that she tried to you know to be funny in the uh in the interview with uh steve harvey and in the way she overall was packaged for the competition and i think if you look at her um at her social media you know um you would see a lot more of her personality come out of, of, of who she is as a person she has you know um she has uh instagram lives uh with her mom uh talking about uh women's issues about health issues and i think that is really you know um what separated her um, in my perspective among uh some of the candidates in uh in in in, in the competition now um paraguay perf um being named as first runner-up uh, was, you know, um, was uh, for some unexpected, but for me, looking back at the entire uh, entire length of the competition, she was as consistent as Harnaz in the performance aspect. And the Q&A, um, although she did not deliver a very bullseye um, answers to her uh, to her questions she still you know went toe to toe with uh, with the rest of the better speakers in her batch had she spoken in Spanish I think that that would have changed um, uh, drastically on who who might have win I thought personally that um, the judges their uh, their favorite is Nadia um, and I believe that the organization's favorite is hard nuts and that's why you see you know you see the results as they were um, I think South Africa's placement a second runner-up is a redemption for not only for South, uh, South Africa's loss in uh, in the 2020 edition because that for me was um, still a bit it kind of um, it 
kind of still is a bit raw at this point. Uh, I think uh, Natasha should have uh, at least made semis for me, at least in the top 20, you know, uh, she should have made um, semis for, uh, for you know, a lot of reasons. Um, but that just, that's just me, that's, that's just my opinion. Um, and, you know, South Africa going in a second runner-up, um, I think that's a good, you know, pambawe. Uh, that I think that's a good redemption arc for South Africa in the competition. Um, I love the fact that this year's Miss Universe Top 3 are really girls who are winner material. Um, I think that they were all deserving of the title. Um, had it been a different set of um, judges, you know, it might have gone the other way around. Uh, it might have gone differently. The results might have gone uh, differently. But I would say that this, this edition of the Miss Universe is a much more, um, how to say this? Uh, it's, a much, it's a much more welcome uh, result. Uh, as compared to the 2020 uh, edition where a lot of people felt that it should have been, you know, Peru who have won or it should have been somebody else who have won. It should have been uh, uh, Brazil who, have, uh, who should have won in the 20th edition. Um, nevertheless, despite all that, Andrea Meza did a really good job as Miss Universe in her reign. But now I am hoping that um, India's uh, Harnas be given a bigger platform, be, can, be uh, given a bigger exposure, especially now that um, she's going to be reigning uh, the, the main focus of the Miss Universe organization as their main winner. Uh, we all know that the Miss USA and Miss Teen USA is, uh, is no longer um, it's no longer uh, gonna live with uh, the Miss Universe uh, winner in, in New York. They're going to be based in LA now as a different um, organization. So I just hope that Harnas reign is going to be given a lot of opportunities to really do what she, uh, she, she, she wants to do as, uh, as their winner. I hope that with the world um, opening up uh, um, Slowly but surely, uh, she's, she'll be given more opportunities to travel, um, more opportunities to have engagement, um, or rather, uh, to have more public engagements um, throughout her reign. I think that Harnaz um, winning after what twenty one years uh, after uh, Lara Duta is you know a really a big deal because we now feel that India is back in the game. Um, I think it only took, you know, um, Adeline uh, Castellino to really shake things up for um, the Miss Universe uh, India, or rather the Miss Diva uh, organization to really find a girl who is very much aligned with the Miss Universe organization. Um, I think now that uh, India has the, uh, the attention of the world, um, because if we are going to look at you know, India's uh, representative at the Miss World Organi uh, the Miss World um, pageant, Man uh, Manas uh, Manasa Varanasi, is I believe one of the girls we really need to pay attention on. And with uh, with Harnaz uh, winning Miss uh, Miss Universe this year, I think you know uh, India is on the right track. It's back on track rather um, when it comes to pageantry. So. Um, I hope that I've addressed every question uh, or everything that you wanted to, me to address. Um, uh, it's already been, wow, um, over an hour since we started this live discussion. Uh, thank you for a lot of the, uh, a lot of the uh, commenters who asked questions, who participated in this, uh, in this live video, who you know, drop comments um, and 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 uh, mention a lot of you know uh, their thoughts in the in the uh, in the competition. Um, for those for those mm, sorry, <laughs> for those who um, who missed the uh, missed the uh, beginning of the competition, uh, uh, rather beginning of the live video, 
Um, I hope that uh, you you rewind uh, the or rewatch the the live video later. Um, and I hope that uh, nasayahan kayo dito sa palive natin uh, ngayon after the Miss Universe uh, pageant. Um, let me know in the comments below um, if uh, I missed anything, anything that you want me to address, or anything that you wanted to address but wasn't, but I wasn't able to read out in the uh, in the uh, in the live chat. Um, I hope that uh you whatever your thoughts are or whatever your questions are you comment it later on um on the on the comment section and i will try my best to answer uh to answer um your questions uh oh wow it's it, we've already hit the one hour and 20 minute mark um the longest that i have spoken is around three hours uh, and that was me delivering a lecture to a group of students in uh, in school so I hope na um, we're able to wrap things up now uh, because I think um, it's time for us to bask in the uh, afterglow of the victory of Harnas. We're glad that um, the crown has went back to, to Asia this year uh, and we're hoping na um, the things that we can learn from this entire pageant experience, we can apply in the next Miss Universe next year. So, um, thank you everyone. Thank you for everyone who has uh, commented in the live chat. Um, everyone who participated in today's uh, live session. And I hope that I will see you again in our next live session. Okay? Um, see you soon uh, in the next pageant season. Bye everyone!